Hi, my name is Jonathan Jones, and I'm a physical education teacher in Bowie, Maryland, which is right outside of Washington, D.C. I'm also a member of the Phys Edagogy team. I'll be moderating this session. Welcome to the Phys Ed Summit 3.0. Thank you so much for joining us for this 24-hour back-to-back global event. We cannot make this day happen without you. Reminder that we are using technology and things happen. If for some reason the video feed stops, please check out Tazel for the new video link. It may take us a few minutes to get it started and rolling again. We thank you for your patience. First and foremost, we would like to thank you, the participants, for taking time to attend the summit. We are very humbled by the outpouring support and promotion of the summit from each and every one of you. By sharing with just one person, you're able to impact hundreds of students. Thank you so much for being here to push best practices, effective physical education, and PD. This is an amazing PE community, and we are so excited to be a part of it. After the summit, we will post the feedback survey to the Phys Ed Summit 3.0 homepage. We hope that you will provide us with some feedback so that we can make 4.0 even better. In order to receive your PD credit, excuse me, your PD certificate, you will need to fill out the quick survey after the summit. Now as moderator, it is my pleasure to introduce our first, our first presenter and our second presenter. Our two presenters that we have with us today are Anthony Coe and David Webster. Anthony Coe has been teaching for 17 years and has recently been appointed assistant principal at a senior secondary school in Tasmania, Australia. Anthony is also the Vice President of the Australian Council for Health, Physical Education and Recreation in Tasmania and is responsible for the annual state conference that attracts over 300 delegates. David, West, David Webster is a proud Tasmanian who has taught health and physical education for 10 years. He is also the Head of Health, Physical and Outdoor Education at Rosney College. He is passionate about being happy and balanced and trying to assist students to be the best that they can be in all areas of life. So without further ado, here's our presenters, Anthony Coe and David Webster. Hi everybody. Welcome to Flipping and Blending Athlete Development as part of, part of the Phys Ed Summit 3.0. We're privileged to be here and we thank you for tuning in around the world wherever you may be. And we're also proud to be here today representing Tasmania and representing Australia on the side of the PE fraternity. My name's David Webster. I'm the Head of Health and Physical Education here at Rosny College. Uh, I've been teaching athlete development for approximately 10 years. Most of that time was in the sport of volleyball but we have recently introduced a basketball program at Rosny College, really passionate about uh, athletes being the best they can be. Um, yeah, really enjoy my role here. Um, Anthony Coe speaking to you now. Uh, I'm currently Assistant Principal here at Rosny College. I've been teaching for 17 years. Uh, in that time, I've been a health and PE teacher. I've been an outdoor ed teacher. I've led health and PE for the last six years. Um, very passionate about technology and currently in my role as assistant principal I'm leading the e-strategy here at Rosny College. Uh, I really enjoy fusing technology in the classroom and amplifying the learning for students to maximise their outcomes and really tap into the day-to-day -day lives of, of them and replicate that on the school side of things. Rosny College well, we're situated in the south of Tasmania. We have 1,200 students and as you can see from the slide on the screen that um, we have a lovely aquatic environment around us. Um, it's a pretty old building. It's built back in the 70s. Um, but we make the most of the opportunities. Our outdoor ed program, as you can see, we're straight out to kayaking and some marine and aquatic activities. And we've got a really, really solid base with about over 60 classes throughout the year that will access different types of health and physical education. Okay, so what is athlete development? Very much athlete development is about being, uh, or making students the best they can be. Uh, it's for students with a high level of motivation, 
uh, and it's about teachers supporting this motivation, uh, supporting students in their individual sports. We have a number of sports specific programs here at Rosny College, uh, basketball, soccer, and then we have a general program for all other, other sports. Uh, these include trampolining, equestrian, athletics, uh, AFL, football. So there's plenty of different sports on offer here at Rosny College. The program's split into three different aspects. There's technical training, which uh, is 50 hours of a 150 hour course, physical preparation, and theory. So each of those um, equates to 50 hours throughout the year and four and a half hours per week of contact time. It's not a lot when you're trying to get athletes to be uh, the best they can be. And at the moment, we feel that it works really well. Um, but as we say for the students, if they want to be the best they can be, we really should as a program be aiming to be the best we can be. So why flip and blend? I guess it's a bit of a buzzword around at the moment. Uh, a few years ago, the, the theme was flipping everything in the classroom. So we, the, the knowledge, I guess, and the expertise around that time was that students would watch videos and undertake learning at home um, and then come to the classroom, which would then allow them more time to focus on other, other things and practical activities. The blending model, uh, sort of combines that but actually happens in the classroom at the same time and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with both and you use a lot of those theoretical approaches in your teaching. So I think combining those two we had four goals in mind when we, we uh, began this project. So first of all we wanted to use the flipping and blending model to maximise the student time when we have them. We wanted to enhance the quality of that time when we have them and we're going to guide you through and show you what it was like before we flipped and after throughout our presentation. Our, gain, our motivation was also there, as it says, to improve the motivation and engagement of the students. Using technology, replicating their lives in the classroom to really increase that engagement with the activities that we have for them. And also to improve our assessment methods and techniques through using technology. And we'll go into more about that later in the presentation. framework that we applied in moving forward and, and flipping and blending athlete development was the team pack model. Some of you are probably aware of this model but I just want to spend a little bit of time getting into it for those that are unaware. Uh, so basically the model combines three different areas. It's technical pedagogical knowledge, uh, content knowledge and pedagogical knowledge. When those three are combined, if I can use the mouse here, you hit what's called the sweet spot. There's a nice little YouTube video that explains this TPAC model if you'd like to find it. So using the, the content knowledge of what athlete development is, um, and it's been a curriculum for a quite a number of years, combining our pedagogical knowledge around flipping and bend, blending and pedagogy around those and how to use it in the classroom, and then our content knowledge about what we actually want of these kids to do and learn um, across the athlete development program, really helped us frame what we were trying to achieve. And I think it's a really good starting point. We didn't allow the technology to drive what we wanted to do. There's some great little posters around on the net. Um, you'll see, what is the purpose? Never let the purpose be technology first. There has to be another reason. Technology will support what you want to do. So we thought this model here is really good to explain our purpose and the way we went about using technology rather than letting technology drive what we wanted to do. And in using this model, we've ensured that it will be sustainable, it, it will be successful, that technology is not just an add-on, but it's really embedded into everything that we're trying to achieve. Um, and it really added value to existing practice. So it was a seamless transition from the before to the after we flipped, which you'll see later on in the presentation. Okay, so to give you an idea about the technical side of the athlete development program before we flipped, we're really lucky to have an excellent partnership with the Phoenix Basketball Club based in Hobart. Uh, excellent coaching staff that come in and work with our students. Uh, they provide uh, basketball specific knowledge, um, but it's a real team focus. Unfortunately, they only get to see the students in one and a half hours per week. Uh, so 
yeah, they focus on that team aspect, going through team drills, team plays, and so on. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to play against other colleges uh, in college championships. And because so many athletes, they love actually playing the game, um, playing, getting involved in the sport, the commitment and participation is really high from our students. However, one of the issues before we flipped was about that there was little time to focus on that individual technical development. So, as you'll see in this video, a lot of the time students were coming into our school gym um, in their own time, before school, uh, during lunch, recess, after school, um, they would bring in a ball and they would shoot around. There was very little focus to the, to the individual training. Um, and as you saw at the very start of our presentation, one of our major goals is to increase the amount of time and the quality of the time that our athletes get to focus on their sport and improve themselves. Uh, just to profile a couple of the guys in this video. Uh, the young lady is a year 11 student. Uh, Lauren, she is playing in a semi-professional basketball league here in Australia called the Siebel. Uh, she plays for the Hobart Lady Chargers. And then we've got a couple of students that play in our local club uh, rosters. They're not a, probably going to achieve ever going to play professionally, but as we said at the start, it's about athlete development being the absolute best, um, or being able to give the opportunity for athletes to be the absolute best they can be. Uh, you can see our gym is a uh, pretty standard sort of school gym, as uh, Anthony talked about before, built in the 1970s and it hasn't been upgraded very much since then. Um, our, one of our aims is to change this focus away from this to being able to get into much more specific uh, individual training. So what was the focus for improvement? So we've seen a bit of a, an overview there of what it was uh, in the video around the technical aspect of athlete development. So what are we trying to achieve? So we're trying to maximise the time on task. So as all of you would know that when kids have access to a gym, go in there with their jeans on, they shoot around, no real direction, in, time, in the time that they have in that particular environment. So we wanted to implement an individual technical training program. So with a bit of knowledge about basketball and skills from Dave and myself, um, we are able to sort of go on that journey to really make sure that when the students were in the gym, they were accessing it, they were there doing something for a reason, not just shooting around, which is okay and, and fine in itself, but really making sure that the time they do have to do that was geared towards improving their own individual skills. Um, through the project, as you will see, we really wanted the students to own their individual technical training and the progress that they would make. Um, this has been a really key aspect of it and something we really tried to drive home. Given the hours that we've talked about and the restrictions we have, um, the team approach is fantastic, but to allow the time for that individual technical development is really tricky given adult kids are very busy, we're talking to 17 and 18 year olds, they've got jobs, they're playing sport, not just basketball as well. So when do they get to do it? They have time that might not exist at school. So being able to enable these guys to do that at home has been really critical um, in the success of the program. And therefore lies in the accountability. So put in the technical training program, give them ownership of it, but then make them accountable that it, it has to be done during the week. And we give them all the tools and the access to information to make sure that happens. And we can also then track the progress with their technical training and, their, and for formative feedback. So we're able to identify areas where there's deficiency or skills or where things aren't going well and put some um, measures in place to address those. So that's been really, really key as we move forward. Okay, so the second aspect of athlete development is a physical preparation. We know that this is where a lot of gains are made for athletes, uh, even though a lot of them don't love getting into the gym, um, 
it's about trying to be make athletes, as we talk about over and over again, being the best they can be. So before we flipped, um, we've got another video that you'll see shortly, but it was very much the physical preparation program was very much about teacher directed goals. So students would come in, listen to what the program would be, uh, short term and long term, uh, and then they would follow that. As we've talked about before, we can't fault these students. There's a really there is a good level of engagement, but uh, most of that is when it's driven by the teacher. Um, and as we've talked about before, we have time constraints of approximately an hour and a half per week uh, for physical preparation. Um, as you know, uh, that's not as much as required to uh, to make athletes into uh, into being you know really strong and uh, and quick, so we need to get them to spend more time in their own time on this. So here's the uh, here's um, a video of what a traditional uh, athlete development class looked like before we flipped. Uh, here I am at the front of the class teaching students, listening to the program for the day. Um, we have quite a good gym at Rosney College even though it's quite small. Uh, we have really good resources, lots of uh, dumbbells, weights, uh, different uh, pull-up bars and so on set up. Uh, so there I was directing the, the session for the day, getting the students to, to start with a bit of a fast feed circuit. Um, they're all engaged. Yeah, as we've talked about before, we can't fault how they go about things. But our goals are about maximising uh, time and the quality of that time. So students using the resistance bands to help with their pull-ups. Need to work a little bit on technique there. We've got kettlebells, medicine balls. A bit of technique happening there around some cleans. A bit of plyometric work. As you can see, the gym is quite crowded. Um, so for students to be able to access all the different resources they need, it becomes quite difficult. So what was our focus for improvement in physical preparation? So similar to the technical, we wanted to increase the time on physical preparation uh, for the students. Once again, they have access to the gym, they can get in there um, when they need to, so increasing the time was key. Uh, enhancing the quality of that time and the program as well, uh, increasing ownership of students' own schedules. So when can they work out? Does it have to be in a class time? Can it be outside that class time at recess or lunch? So increasing that ownership was key. And the accountability of that time. So what are you going to do when you're in there? Um, so as you saw in that last video, we had uh, Dave was the, the mainstay as a teacher in front directing it, but what happens when Dave's not there? Can we implement a system where students have got access to the gym, they don't need a teacher there, they don't need that direction that ensures that there's quality in the program and then there's a reason for them to actually go in there as well. So those were the four key areas for improvement under physical preparation for the athlete development program. Okay, so the final component of athlete development is the theory aspect, uh, very much based around sports science principles. Uh, prior to the flip, we'd actually already made some changes to the program where we'd integrated much of the, uh, the theory into our physical preparation and technical sessions. So when we're looking at things like goal setting or nutrition, uh, we then talk about specifically how that affects the athlete in the environment they're in. So we had made steps to improve. One of the key aspects, and this is throughout all of uh, Tasmania with the athlete development uh, syllabus, is that there is a mandatory diary uh, or athlete journal that's filled out after each training session. You'll see in the video that we're about to show that the assessment time around uh, the theory and the, uh, the diary is quite consuming. Uh, that's a box that was in my office full of uh, different diaries um, and the front of it over on the right. So students after they've completed a training session 
they previously would have gone and got their diary. Here I am telling them uh, what they needed to, to put in it from the session they just completed. As you can see, it's all handwritten. Uh, we keep the diaries, they work through them, and then uh, we mark them and, and give feedback. But that feedback can take sometimes one to two weeks before they, they get that back to them. So, yeah, you can see the students there. Once again, they're doing it. They're more than happy to do it. But for us, it's about uh, ensuring the best processes. And one of our goals at the start was about making assessment easier. So, folks, for improvement, making assessment easier. So, improving our assessment methods. Um, what can we do that might uh, change or modify the folder and portfolio system you've just seen on the video? How can we implement an anytime, anywhere diary system? How can we record and keep track of these portfolios and provide that feedback more timely to students and gather evidence at the same time? So we're not going through files, we're not sifting through 20 plus different plastic sleeves and pulling things out and writing comments and going back in there. So we want to make sure that process was completely changed around and more time efficient and beneficial for the students on the whole. Okay guys, so very much so far in this presentation what we've looked at is the before, uh, how athlete development was working. Uh, as we talked about in our introductions, my uh, expertise was mainly around the athlete development programs. Uh, Anthony was really good with his technology. So we decided to, to look at those goals and use technology as the way we achieve those goals, not just um, you know, as an end to itself. We're about to present something rather exciting, we think, that uh, might be adopted by other people around the world. Um, so we're now gonna guide you through the, the technological aspects of the flip and the blend and you'll see how um, we've implemented some pretty cool strategies along the way using Google Forms as the uh, the mainstay I guess of recording and collating information. So here we go the flip and the blend so the technical training and aspect number one we want to maximize student time so how do we do it we've already alluded to this but we implemented any time learning we developed a memorandum of understanding around gym time. So no longer, as you saw in the video earlier on the presentation, with students to come into the gym and just shoot around for the hell of it with bad technique, shooting three-pointers if you're a big man, and you're never going to shoot a three-pointer in the game. I know that's terrible news to some of us big guys out there. But um, we really made a concerted effort to focus on changing the way the students use the gym. Um, it provided a focus to make sure that they can be the best that they can be, with the motto there is you train how you play and you play how you train. So we've got some footage in a minute of, of how that all changed around, but it was really about when you get to the gym, you're going to use the time to develop your technical skills and not just shoot around your jeans and waste that time, but use it more efficiently. So number two, we enhance the quality of the time. So this is a big step, a big change for, for the Rosny College students. Um, I wouldn't say they were a heavy technological school. We definitely have uh, quite a lot of machines that students have access to, but mobile learning and the use of that kind of technology isn't really here yet. So this was something new for the students. So changing the time to focus on skill development, we used a QR code program and we broke that down into four groups. So we really wanted these kids to go, right, we want you to have really good ball handling skills, primarily. We want you to start practicing your dribbling, not just going to shoot and do all that kind of stuff. So it's really fundamental things that we wanted to see our students do. Guard play and post play. So we broke everyone into basically guards or, or forwards post, and they could move between those. So they weren't stuck where they were, and they can record and do the drills that we set up for each of those. So I guess with our knowledge from basketball and my knowledge coming through a similar program when I was in college we were able to get this along the way. Um, all these drills had targets to meet so it was out of 10, out of 30 etc. They all had a particular focus for the drill. Um, what this did which was fantastic it actually allowed time for the teachers and coaches to identify areas for improvement so 
we could walk into the gym at any time, we'd have the results from their scores, from the drills, go, hey, you know, your left side dribble off the post in doing a layup or reverse layup, it's not working so well. What are we doing here? Let's have a look at that particular skill. So while the teacher's doing that, you've got everyone else can be in the gym at the same time working on their technical skills. I don't have to go and teach the ball handling, the dribbling, the guard, the post play. They can all access it themselves. So it was really a fantastic move forward in the way the students use their time. To give you a bit of an idea of what it looked like, so we've got a pretty uh, significant display board. So here we have some basic ball handling drills. So the kids come up to the screen if they don't know what the drill is, scan the QR code, it takes them off to a little video that describes and shows them what to do. The verbal description you can see on the screen at the moment and then their goal, 30 in each hand. Some of these drills were quite quick to get through, but it's more the routine and the touch that we wanted to implement in terms of the specific skills for the students in the activity. So they really warmed to this idea of, of having their phones and we've recently per purchased a uh, batch of iPads, put the QR scanner um, on those iPads so we can get the kids who don't have the technology to come and scan it as well. So we're really making sure we cater for everybody in there. Uh, probably uh, need to reference where these videos are going just in case you scan that one on the last page. but goes to the coach's clipboard. Um, it's a sequence of videos of training, all the drills we've used from this website, which have been fantastic. And once you get in there as a, a ball handling drill, you can quickly sequence between all the videos in your QR scanner app. So you don't actually have to come back to the, to the board where we've got all the drills. You can do one scan at the top and just cycle through the whole lot of videos. So we find they're really useful. Um, they give some modifications and, and some steps to try and change things around. They can see what's meant to be happening and what it looks like to be successful in terms of each of the drills. And um, yeah, students really found that quite beneficial to see someone else modelling it. As a teacher, I don't have to model that anymore. I can be off working with someone else. So in terms of that real blend learning in the classroom, it's been absolutely fantastic. And the advantage is that this is, these QR codes are then accessible um, through our Facebook page, which I'll show you shortly. So they can do this stuff anywhere, anytime, in the playground, at home, it doesn't matter, lunchtime, recess. So it's really driven into them. If you want to be the best you can be, you now have the tools and the access, the information and what's required to get to that level. So here's a little video snippet of what it looked like after we got things going in terms of uh, blending the technical training. These videos are on YouTube too, as you can probably notice. So if you want to access them at any time, jump on board. So probably speaks for itself, but as you can see, we've got kids using mobile phones, scanning the QR codes that have been set up, immediately going into their drills, finish the drill, come back up again. So this was in the early days and the inception was great. So the, really inquisitive about, oh, what's that drill? What's that name on that board? I want to scan that one. What's that one about? Getting their friends over, hey, try this one, try that one. So what you're seeing here is something that has never been done in athlete development purely because of time. Um, and and I guess uh, time, not only for the students, but for Dave and myself to sit down and plan how we can let this happen. How can we get these guys to really improve their technical skills? So. We're excited where it can go and, and what these guys have been doing in the classroom and outside of the classroom and it sets up a nice little foundation, I guess the building block, so we can add to the videos, we can add to the skills. There's a whole section on that coach's clipboard with two balls. So let's put that one in then. So you got your ball handling, dribbling right, you're doing really well, now we'll go, we'll go take it to another level. There are thousands of videos out there. There's a whole LeBron James training video section. We can do that. So we've got a good chance to really shape the future for these guys and, and really change the way they go about their basketball. Uh, in case you're interested, I guess, on the technological side of things, so um, uh, heads up to a colleague of mine, Anita Welsh, uh, at Oakley High School. She used a batch creator for QR codes last year. So I've replicated her work and I'm sure other people have used it throughout the world as well. So simply putting in the link, automatically generating a QR code, 
placing in the description from the coach's um, clipboard, as you've seen there before. We've shared this document out to the kids. They can get access to it at any time now. So it's really opening up potential for using technology to blend and flip the, the learning. Our third, our third uh, area for flipping was improving motivation and engagement. So we really wanted to amplify the learning. So using technology to amplify the learning, not as the driver uh, of, the, of the learning, but really supporting what we were doing. We connected with their lives. They've all got phones, smartphones galore. So using that technology as they normally would, bringing that into the classroom has been key. Ownership through technology. So they can bookmark those videos. They can go back to them all the time. They've got their own resource walking around with them 24 hours a day, sitting in their pocket. Um, they don't have to come to the gym to do it. They can whip it out anywhere, anytime. Um, as I've alluded to, our, our Facebook page, our group that we've set up, has been great. And Dave's had that running from the inception. Um, little snapshot there. So we can put our codes up there. As it's been really good. They can engage with it. They can find it. Um, all our communication digitally can come through the group, obviously sends out those automatic notifications. So we're right across the board in touch with them, really building a good sense of community and, and um, a notion of success. We really want you to succeed in, in keeping those things going. So it's a bit of a snapshot there of how we've flipped the technical and blended that technology into it. A couple of pictures here of what you can see in the gym. Um, a bit of scanning going on there on the on the left of screen, um, broken up. So nothing too fancy. Uh, probably it looks pretty basic, but there's a pretty powerful pedagogy behind behind what we've done there. And finally, improving our assessment. So we've got Google Forms for tracking their progress. Uh, automatic emails. We've used AutoCrack, the um, Google add-on for the sheets. A lot in this pro in this program, so pretty familiar with how to get the most out of that now. So we're through this program, we've been able to establish electronic portfolios that we can access as teachers, the students access them, parents can access them, coaches can access them. We can use them for talent identification. We can send their data. We can give access there to their data to anyone who wants to get it within the logical means of how we can go about that, of course, but the potential to say, hey, we've got a student down here who's performing really well, have a look at their um, portfolio and the drills they're doing, um, yeah, would be guaranteed that attract a fair bit of interest. So what that looks like um, is basically this here. So we've got our Google form. I'm just going to click and um, open it and guide you through what it looks like for a student. Um, so they can go right through that Google form, fill out all their results, everything they possibly can. Now here's a little example of the Google form, um, filling out your name, quite simply. Um, there we go, email address. I'm just going to do this one as myself. I've been testing it a fair bit uh, as we go. So we'll go right through it. Uh, so they'll choose ball handling, might be their drill. Click next. Now, pretty simple here. So they just identify which ball handling drill that they've done during the day. I've asked them to shoot 10 free throws. Uh, down here, shot 10 out of 10. Fantastic work. Technical skills, same same notion. So what were the what were the skills that you did today in your drill? So a bit of ownership. You don't have to do it all, but what did you what did you actually do um, as you went through it? Once again, clicking through there. Then we get into break it down to the guard and the post play. So post play. So I guess the limitation on the Google Sheet, and we use this, um, sorry, the form, having a scoring regime. So we have a maximum of, of 10 on a Google Form scale. So all our drills are geared towards 10. Um, as you can see, the full sweep of post play drills are all there for the students to do and the same uh, for the guard play. So everything was 10 out of 10, V cuts left and right, um, all the videos, all the drills, all linked into a Google recording sheet. So the result of filling in that 
Google Form is what you can see on your screen right now. So we've got a great feedback sheet. So it'll detail ball handling drills, the dribbling drills, record your free throws. And this is for someone who's um, pretty darn awesome. <laughs> I've gone through guard and post play, all the drills, their score out of 10 for each one, gives us a date. So that is absolutely fantastic. It gets emailed around to whoever gets access to it. We get a copy in our Google Drive. Um, so it's really, really great. Obviously, if there are areas there that need working on, if it was a left-hand layup, for example, like I've mentioned, we can really hone in and say, hey, how you going? Let's focus on that for your next session. Really want you to go and work hard and getting better on that left-handed drill. So we think this is a fantastic way forward. Um, it's something that the, the kids haven't done. There's no pen and paper involved. Uh, as we said, anytime, anywhere, they can fill that in, done. We can be sitting in our offices and goes, oh, hey, gee, um, Josiah's just done a really good drill there. Here's his stats. Fantastic. Accountability, if we let the parents involved and also the coaches at the higher level. So we can take this to, um, to a long way through um, for the kids throughout their basketball, I guess, career. Okay, now to look at the flip around physical preparation. Our first goal is maximising student time. Basically what we did here was we tried to expand on the one and a half hours a week we had where the teacher was in the space and allow students to access our gym or our weights gym in their own time. So we have study lines here, uh, we've got recess and lunch where the students were able to access it as part of a gym membership. This was done through a memorandum of understanding where students would use it in a safe, respectful manner. The second and third goal is about enhancing the quality of time and improving motivation and engagement. We put both of these together and aim to achieve these through uh, one method. Uh, we, this is a bit of a research if you're interested in uh, Rebecca DeFore uh, and the four critical questions. Uh, as a school, we've recently been looking at professional learning communities and the four, four, the four critical questions. There's so much about it on uh, the internet and YouTube that if you'd like to look that up, uh, it would be really worthwhile. In a nutshell, these four questions are, what do we expect students to learn? How will we know when they've learned it? How will we respond when they don't learn it? And how will we respond when they already know it? So the first one is about uh, the curriculum. What in the curriculum or syllabus do we expect students to be able to achieve by the end of the year? The second part is about the assessment uh, and the feedback. And the third and fourth questions are about what do we do when students are either falling behind or um, extending themselves? So the major thing that we looked at was the idea of gamification or gamifying learning. Uh, I'm quite new to this, so I'll let Anthony talk to you about it. Yeah, thanks Dave. Um, I was lucky enough earlier this year to hear Ian Jukes present at a Future Schools Conference uh, in Sydney here in Australia. And um, he was really insightful into the, the, the digital citizen, the digital native that we have in our schools now. And he talked about game development and his, uh, I think it was his son, was a graphic designer and working with, um, I think it was the latest Call of Duty game. And the brief that the gamers were told is that there has to be a gratification or reward every one to 1.5 seconds. He went on to talk about the implications for that in, in terms of Candy Crush and how significantly um, important it is in that game, the inbuilt rewards and gratification. They are almost instant. Uh, I'd hate to think of how quickly you can, you know, uncover the next level, get the next row blocked out, all that kind of stuff. And it just builds and builds and builds and builds. And that's what our students are exposed to, not just Candy Crush, obviously, but multiple games, social networking. They can... They can receive a like, they can get a new reward or a gratification instantaneously. Um, for those of us that are, that are old enough, it used to be the notion you have to work hard and it was delayed gratification. No longer exists. We want information, we want reward for effort, we want gratification now. So the challenge is how do we build that into our teaching and learning um, rather than I guess the old model of, of work, we might say well done at the end of the lesson, but to keep kids engaged into that loop of gratification rewards, how do we do it? 
and um, that was, I guess, part of the theory and the focus behind what we've established and where we've gone um, in flipping the, the physical preparation side of things. Okay, so having uh, had a chat with Anthony earlier this year about this gamification idea, I was quite excited and uh, spent quite a lot of my holidays working on how we might be able to introduce a game into athlete development. So as you'll see on the next slide, we looked at a set of norms. Um, a lot of these norms you can uh, access on the internet through sites such as Top End Sports. Uh, as you can see in brackets there, the PE geeks uh, mentioned, Jared Robertson, he uh, has a nice little app that has norms about different fitness tests. Uh, we also had quite a lot of fitness tests and norms that have been built up over time in Tasmania um, through our uh, statewide athlete development programs. We looked at the CrossFit model. We'd received uh, a little bit of professional development as a staff around the idea of CrossFit and some of their uh, key exercises. Uh, we looked at the requirements to get into Tasmania Police and the Australian Defence Force, uh, sports specific requirements, and we created a game. Uh, at the moment, the game's not age or gender specific, and as we've talked about, Rosny College is grade 11, 12, so older students, and the majority of our students in our programs are males. So we've based it around that, but there's no reason why this philosophy can't be quite easily changed. So what you're seeing now is the game. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot on there. The basic idea is that students look at different challenges or different um, goals within this game and they try and work their way through a series of levels. So one being the, the basic technique sort of based uh, achievements. So things like being able to do 10 perfect push-ups. Uh, as many of you would know, uh, a lot of students will try and aim to uh, do the hardest things first, try and be heroes. Uh, we're very much about trying to uh, build on foundations and work through a progression. Now, students work at different paces. So uh, some students might be able to show that they can do 10 perfect push-ups in the first lesson of the year. That's fine. Uh, that goes back to the four critical questions. What if they can do it? Well, then it's about moving them on. Uh, what about if students can't do 10 perfect push-ups? Well, it's about trying to change it so that they can. So basically the first three levels are bronze level badges, the next uh, three levels are silver and, and gold, looking at the uh, Olympic medal sort of classification. Down the side at the end of each level we've got what are called bosses. So for those that are into computer games, at the end of a level you uh, verse a boss, you try and uh, beat that boss to, to move on to the next level. So what this is, is a workout or a series of challenges that um, encapsulates what that level is about. They, the students are unable to lock, unlock those uh, bosses by completing a random challenge in each level. Down the bottom, we have some bonus badges. So these bonus badges uh, are where students are able to achieve a number of different achievements. So for example, to get into Tasmania Police, you need to run a beep of 8.8. .8. You need to be able to do a certain amount of push-ups. Uh, it's 20. Uh, and do the Illinois a certain amount of time. So if the students are able to achieve those three different things, what we do is we say, you've achieved the police bonus badge. We've got other ones across here around uh, SAS, Sidious, Fortius, and Altius. So, uh, faster, stronger and higher, the Olympic motto is again, so really about students looking at what they're able to achieve. Okay, so the questions, how will we know when they've learned it? Okay, so they complete challenges, they progress through the game, different exercise pathways, so there's still uh, learning behind this, and, and modifications and, and, and programs that are developed behind it. Uh, we have Google Forms to inform that learning, and we've got a badge system. 
So Anthony talked before about the use of Google Forms and the add-on Autocrat. So that provides that um, that feedback about whether students are able to achieve something or not. We also created a QR code version of this sheet. So if students wanted to know what it looked like or what the protocols were for each uh, each challenge, then they could click on one of uh, sorry they could scan one of these and they'd be able to be directed to a site that showed this. Uh, Bodybuilding.com's got a huge video library. YouTube's got hundreds of examples. As I mentioned, Top End Sports got a lot of protocols around different activities such as uh, the beep test, vertical jump and so on. So this is what it looks like. The students um, basically go into a Google form around uh, physical preparation and their fitness test results. They enter their name. Their email address. The date they've achieved. Different, uh, different task. And then they'll go through and they'll enter their fitness testing results. Now, they don't have to do every single fitness test or challenge in the one uh, session. They might be just doing some push-ups. So for example, if someone did 52 push-ups, which would be uh, the, the gold level of push-ups, then they enter that into the, uh, the form, the Google form, they click continue. The next session section is also about fit tests, but they don't need to um, do anything in particular there. The next section is about specific challenges. So we use quite a few CrossFit ones. Meet the girls, there's uh, posters on um, the internet of those. And then they submit it. Once they submit it, what they do is they get that gratification back to them. And we'll show you how that's done. So the students fill out their fitness test results or their exercise results. They are then um, emailed out a PDF with the badge that they've achieved. Behind this, in Sheets, we've used quite a lot of formulas to, um, to enable this to happen and to, for it to be recognised, mail mergers uh, and the add-on autocrats really what we use to support it. Okay, so here's what our physical preparation sessions look like after we did the flip. You've got students scanning different tasks, so how to do a squat. They're then able to look, look at an example and then have a go at it. Lauren being quite tall, she uh, might need to make some modifications around uh, not doing a full depth squat uh, and working on getting the knees over her feet. Got push-ups. Now Luke, before he uh, had a look at his own form and, and the form of uh, others on the internet, wasn't doing that well with his push-ups, but after he did, he was uh, yeah really improved them. And then you can see that we've also uh, got pull-ups, but basically the, the opportunities are endless. This is Chess here doing some uh, pull-ups, probably lowering a lowering a little bit slowly. So revisiting the critical questions, how will we respond when they don't uh, learn or students aren't able to achieve certain goals? What we do is we put programs in place. So we might have inverted push-ups rather than uh, the, the strict protocol uh, ones. We might do pull-ups with bands or with jumps. Uh, it's about building on the program. So, what what every uh, PE teacher would do in their in their normal classes, uh, they've got focus for areas of improvement. So, we talk to students about if they are able to achieve silver in in a lot of the the badges, but if they're not able to do so in, for example, the sit and reach, that gives them an idea of uh, working on their flexibility. Uh, 
we can track using the data from the Google Sheets that goes into our, our Google Drive. Um, and yeah, we really focus on, on delivering a personalised program, but with that evidence behind it. And the final uh, critical question is how will we respond when they already know it? Well, the game in its design is about a progression. The, the level nine is, you know, very what would be called challenging uh, for students to be able to do. Um, so if they were all able to do that, then they would be, uh, yeah, a really, a really strong athlete. And probably the game is, is not for them. Uh, going back to the goals, why we introduced the game, it's about motivation. Um, and if a student's that motivated to achieve all those goals, then they've got that intrinsic motivation already. But if they really wanted to, they could design their own challenges, uh, extensions, make things a bit more difficult, add weight and so on. The other thing is, as well, is by building up this uh, this database of fitness test results uh, for schools statewide and for uh, talent identification programs, there's a real uh, real opportunity there for, for sports to, to see what sort of athletes are out there. So the finally uh, improving assessment. So we went back into the Google Forms for our diary entry. So instead of the paper-based uh, folder and, uh, of file work, we went through the Google Forms again um, using the Autocrat add-on that we've mentioned before in this presentation today. We have email PDFs that come back to the teacher and back to the student. They can access that through to parents and coaches. So uh, that's been really uh, beneficial for us to get that anytime, anywhere sort of diary entry as well and you get that electronic portfolio happening. Uh, a lot of time efficiency of the teacher, so instead of sifting through and uh, trying to find the information in a diary, it's all electronic, really quickly to find. Um, it allows more time on task, so instead of spending 20 minutes on a diary at the end of a lesson, the kids can actually scan the QR code and enter their diary as they're walking out to their cars or they're checking their messages on the way to the classroom. So it really is quite time efficient if they forget they're not there and they are doing stuff away from the classroom, you know, which is what we encourage them to do, then they can fill the diary in there as well. So it really opens up um, a lot of opportunities. It's probably an essential part of the accountability um, and ownership of the learning that we've provided for the students. Here's an example of, of the diary that comes through, just a basic Google Doc that's linked into the, to the Google form that they um, fill out. So it, tracking their focus area, review or outline of what they've been doing in the session and their motivation, sleep and recovery. And that's all fully customizable and filtered through the uh, Google Sheet. So at assessment, reporting, parent teacher interviews, we can bring the sheet up, filter by student and say, here you go, here's all your diary entries for your son or daughter. So I'm wrapping up, Dave, I suppose we've just about come to the end of our presentation today. Um, so hopefully we've been able to show you and enlighten you how we've maximised our student time, we've enhanced the quality of the time that they have uh, with us and on their own, improve their motivation and engagement and uh, improve the assessment methods. So a couple of quotes on screen there from um, some students that we've been working with in the program. Uh, we've talked about Lauren on the, on the left there that She's already into a pretty high level basketball program, but she actually found that having those drills and skills there that she can work on is really beneficial for her because her time is team based, completely 100% team based training with the local Lady Chargers team and also uh, at the school. So she's really found that quite beneficial. Luke in the middle, uh, it's given a real focus for the training, uh, gives him something to aim for the technical side of training now with his skill development rather than doing that sort of traditional shoot around. And um, Jackson, they really want to get through the levels of the game. So that's been really motivational for him um, to see where he can get to. And that's, you know, starting from base level at the bronze, how far can I get through? So it's been great to set up that kind of, get that feedback from the kids um, throughout the program. Okay, thank you guys for uh, following our presentation today. We've been really grateful for you being able to have a look at some of the things that we've implemented. We're really excited about the way we've gone about it um, and as Anthony has said it's about using technology in a way that enhances our programs not just because it's technology. So 
a couple of thank yous before we go. I, I really want to thank our athletes, uh, our coaches. Uh, we've got some vet media students. Uh, vet means vocational education and training. Uh, we've got some students there that produce some of the videos for us throughout this year. So I'd like to thank them as well. Uh, and we've produced this presentation on the uh, eMaze platform online. The link is at the bottom of your screen now. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, our Twitter handles are also on there and our email. Um, we'll be sharing uh, as much as possible um, all the documents that we've got and the badges and examples. Our spreadsheets are being developed as we go and Google with all the formulas as the badges as we evolve the program. But uh, we're very happy to share with you along the way. And um, I guess uh, finally, we really want to thank uh, the Physiotagogy team and everybody out there around the world who's uh, been watching live or has tuned in after this. Um, we really appreciate it. And a massive thanks. It's just such a great initiative to be part of part of this and represent Australia uh, with Andy Hare and the other guys that will be uh, presenting as, as Phys Ed Summit and really looking forward to hanging around and watching what else uh, you guys have got in store for us. So thanks very much.